Well, howdy do there, you YouTubers. M. Cofford here. We're going to be doing, well, another Altergeist deck profile, but this time it is the winning version of the deck from the January Zodiac Tournament. Now, a little bit of background for you guys. The January Tournament was all OCG format. We were focusing a little bit more on, well, there was no list, there wasn't anything interesting coming out, so we went to the OCG to kind of spice and things up. Uh, Herman Hansen ended up, as far as I know, building this. Um, he was the one that ended up winning, uh, presented me with his deck list. Uh, now, duels do have the ability to change deck list in between rounds, uh, but outside of two rounds in the tournament, Herman actually played this list pretty much destroying everything. You know, Burning Abyss, it, it, it's not really much of an issue when you have such a great monster, aka Silquidos. Now, I've been talking about Silquidos for a little while. The fact that you can return one other Altergeist card you control to the hand, aka you can return the trap cards to your hand, and get free bounce effect value. And the fact that you can do this on both players' turns is absolutely astonishing. Now, I've talked about Silquidos comparing it to Grammel, and in situations where game state becomes simplified, things like Soquitos gain infinite value. Having an 800 on the board, it can bounce back anything for free. And then to talk about Marionetta over here, having more just generic abuse in general for the deck, uh, it's really amazing. So we're going to go through here, do a short little breakdown of Herman's list. And remember, just because Mega Capital G thinks that this deck is good. I still called it before he did, so remember that. As soon as I uh, told people to pick up their Altergeist cores, as soon as I started reading these cards, yeah, just calling it now. Still like to see the deck get more, but hell, Multifaker was exactly what this baby needed. Um, I actually, have, I've massively underestimated how Multifaker works, and just Multifaker with Soquito's value, it's absurdly infinite like just the amount of monsters that you can generate on the board putting you in a, such an advantageous like uh, it, it's actually super disgusting so let's dig into Herman's list by the way cheers Herman you deserve it buddy you're a very 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 consistent player in the tournaments you do your country proud he's not from America by the way he's from somewhere in Europe <laughs> Herman will uh comment down below and tell me and be like god damn it Robbie I knew you'd forget you're right so anyway triple altergeist marionetter the best starter in the deck literally just haha set protocol I also mentioned the protocol can uh, negate shit and destroy it yeah this card actually just does that uh, triple mellow's week or mellow Zeke uh, actually this is just tax spot removal actually this card is actually really good they all have the some sort of this card sends to the graveyard Claws, uh, Mellow Zeke actually gets to add, but this thing gets to attack directly and spot remove. What more do you actually want from a stun deck? I don't, I don't think there is much. Uh, triple Multi Faker, actually another excellent tool to the deck. Actually, probably the best goddamn thing uh, you have. But I mean, you can't switch some of the monsters except for Altergeist turn to use that effect. But we're not using that effect. We're using that on the opponent's turn. Uh, only two Silquido. Actually, a little bit shocked about this. I've heard a lot of different opinions between two and three. Uh, I feel like just because you can swap some it off of multi figure, you don't need the third copy. Just something to honestly consider. Uh, triple Ash Blossom, one Gofu. Actually, this just making an instant link three. Um, really good value. Or this and another monster gets you into your boy Saruja down here. Uh, triple Ghost Ogre, two Ghost Reaper and triple max. Remember, you can beam these off of Needle Fiber if you happen to resolve and roll into it if you have dead hand traps uh, to bring out more dead hand traps to your deck and just kind of go up the link ladder. You don't want to have too many potential dead draws in the deck, um, but when you're going through a tournament, you know that pff, the entire metagame is probably going to be Burning Abyss and Pendulum Editions. Having these mained to take out shit like Needle Fiber, yeah, you use it to your advantage. Uh, spell is only triple duality. Um, no desires. I know a lot of people like, oh, I want to turbo for more additional odds. Honestly, the deck kind of does that enough as it is. 
Uh, trap board. Only one materialization, once again, just a generic revival for the archetype. Triple protocol, we've already talked about just how absurdly broken. This is triple, uh, triple infinite transients, once again. Who doesn't like having even more hand traps? Literally, this is just three, six, eight. <laughs> uh, I, sorry, I, I, I got broke up here. Too many hand traps is what this is. Literally, like, your entire deck is just hand traps with a spot removal engine. Like, this is literally what Yu-Gi-Oh! has turned into. Uh, two personal spoofing. Mm, nuts again, not three copies. Uh, one judgment, two strike, two warning. Maximizing the amount of hate that you're going to have against your opponent because you don't want your opponent to really capitalize on really anything. You're playing a go-first deck, and I think a lot of people, they're starting to kind of realize this. Uh, going into this metagame, it, this deck reminds me of Heraldic Beast in a way. It, it's a very good engine. It just needs one or two things, and you're good. But the only difference is, at this point in time, this deck actually has a, one of its one to two final things. So, really good value. Right, let's go to the extra deck, shall we? All right. One Omega, one Wonder Magician. Honestly, very standard. Obviously, you're going to tag down into this. One Dante for Ghost Reaper. One Hextium. One Calugula. One Prime Banshee. A lot of the OCG decks haven't been playing these. I've been playing extra copies of Hextia. Kind of just depends on where you want to go with it, but I guess you don't really have much of a reason not to want to use at least one copy of each of these. One Borlo Dragon. One Needle Fiber. One Decode Talker. Um, one Metal Foes Electrum. One copy of Link Spider. One Link Rebo. One Security Dragon. One Negrisu. And one Ceruja. Side deck's pretty standard. The, the last copy of Ghost Reaper to kind of just ensure that you've got it in case you need it. Triple Dark Hole, because for some reason, the OCG has maximum board wipes. Um, I, I honestly understand the reasoning and the OCG having this at three for the list. Um, you don't want cards that clear your own board. Also, keep in mind, no Feather Duster in here. Uh, triple Designated from the Grave. Nope. 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 Nope, no, no fun allowed for the hand traps. Uh, triple evenly matched, triple mind crush, and two typhoon for pendulum magician. Honestly, this is this was some really spicy tech. So Herman definitely did a good job, honestly, bringing it home for this. Shove up a couple hands here, kind of just show you honestly what this bad boy can do. We'll start here. Uh, protocol warning with <laughs> three hand traps. I can fuck with that. Uh, Gofu with personal spoofing, but you're also opening up Mar Marionetter, so you can actually set your good shit and then kind of roll into uh, spoofing, uh, get multi faker, and then you can activate the protocol that you set on your opponent's turn. And then bada bing, bada boom, triggers you need to set up Silquitos, and you're good. I mean, you've also got Black Wing Gofu turn one if you want to roll into Ceruja and kind of see what you're going to draw back here. This, this hand's actually really good value. Like, I'm actually surprised. Uh, infinite Transients and Spoofing with Marionetter. Anytime I see Seri Marionetter set four, I'm just like, hey, we're open for business. This is this is why I love my anti-meta. Uh, it sucks we open up Materialization Sequitos, but I mean, hey, we have Spot Removal. We've also got the Warning with Maxi. The only thing that this deck would lose to in this scenario is Feather Duster, something more powerful. Marionetter with multi faker. Haha, uh -huh, so quitos. You know. Free value. Infinite transients. Multi faker. I mean, it's something. You have hand traps. You just have to control where your opponent's going with their initial turn, honestly. Uh ooh. Marionetter with Melozeke is not bad, but I mean you have the rest of the hand trap party to kinda bring it on home. Well, Last hand here. Marionetter with Materialization. I uh, wish we had the. If we're going second, we get to the multi faker, but I mean, we're already going to be kind of down crying a little bit. So, kind of, kind of just to see where it goes from there. So, this is Herman's first place tournament deck for this month. Um, we do have multi faker coming out literally next month. Or, excuse me, literally in what? April, May? Correct, correcting myself here. That way, you guys can kind of get ahead of the game, pick up those Altergeist cores. So you guys are good to go. So you guys can play one of the most degenerate decks 
I've honestly seen in a very long time. I, I love stun. I love the concepts, and I love what decks like this bring to the game, contrary to popular belief. So tell me what you guys think down below. Once again, congratulations, Herman, and I'm out, guys. The ride never ends, guys. Make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel. Make sure you guys check out Van Cole 40 for my Card Fight Vanguard channel. And join me and House of Champions on the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.